Hi there, my name's Simon Drew, and welcome to the Practical Stoic Podcast, where I give you practical Stoic advice for modern times. If you'd like to see more information about this podcast, or if you'd like to see more of my free resources, just go to my website. It's risetothegoodlife.com. But for now, I really hope that you enjoy this podcast, and if you do, then I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe on iTunes and leave a positive review so that more people can have the chance to listen to this great work. Hi there, my name's Simon Drew, and welcome to the Practical Stoic Podcast. I just want to start this episode by saying another thank you to all of the people who have sent out reviews for the podcast on iTunes. I really appreciate your support, and it means a lot to me that you've actually taken the time to review the podcast. So, like I've done in a previous episode, I'm going to read maybe three or four of these reviews, and I'll read some more in the next episode as well, because I've got a fair few to get through. So, this first one that I want to read is from Tash622 from the UK, and they said, uh, This podcast is uplifting and provides an excellent insight into the ancient philosophy of Stoicism. The practices discussed in this podcast have changed my life, and I value my stoic journey as one of the most important aspects of my life. Brilliant listening for anyone who wants to improve themselves. So thank you so much for that review, Tash. I really, really appreciate it, and keep on listening. This next review is from Prokopoton. I I know I absolutely butchered that, but I'm doing the best I can. (laughs) So they said... Great podcast for practical advice in a soothing voice. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate that. And keep on listening. The next one is from DGMN16 from the UK. And they said, very nice introduction to stoicism. Ideal length of podcast. I have started listening to this podcast today and I am left wanting more. Keep up the good work. So thank you very much for that review. It is much appreciated and keep on listening. So I'll read one more Uh, review and I'll save the rest for another episode but this is from CDELX001 from USA and they said thank you for this podcast I started listening this week and I'm on episode six now covering personal philosophy I love the actionable advice and I will be making my personal philosophy today and you know this is actually my favorite review so far only because I'm really proud of this person for taking action on these principles that I'm sharing because honestly to me like this podcast would be worthless if it was just for the purpose of me sharing these ideas because I want to share them I want to share these principles with you these stoic values but unless you decide to go out there and take action on these principles that I'm sharing and this advice that I'm giving, then it's really worthless because it's not changing anybody's life. So thank you so much to those people who I've mentioned in these reviews, and I will be reading the rest later. And, you know, this is actually a good opportunity for me to say, look, if you have been getting good results out of any of the principles that I've been sharing in this podcast, or if you've been implementing some of the strategies and you're starting to you know, feel like you're making some progress, I would love to hear from you. So please get in contact with me. You can go to my Facebook page, which is Daily Stoic Quotes, and you can message me there. Or you can go to my website, which is risetothegoodlife.com. That's risetothegoodlife.com. And uh, from there, you can go to my contact page and send me an email. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to talk to you. So please do that. Also, if you haven't written a review so far, but you'd like to, then please feel free to do that. And you can just go to iTunes and do that. And it is so helpful and it really means a lot to me. And I'll read it out on this podcast in a future episode. Also, just before I get into the actual bulk of this episode... Uh, I I feel like this is a very arrogant thing to say, but I have been getting a disproportionate number of reviews uh, that have been mentioning my smooth voice. Now, I just feel like it would be wrong of me to not mention that, you know, if you do like my smooth voice, which is very strange to me, I don't really recognize it, but I have been getting reviews mentioning that. So if you do like the smooth voice, then you might like some of my music. I don't know if I've mentioned in a podcast episode previous to this, but I'm actually a jazz musician as well, and I have a few albums out on iTunes and and Spotify and all sorts of things. So anywhere where you can get free streamed music, you can basically find my music. 
you can find it on Spotify and Apple Music and and all sorts of things. So if you just search Simon Drew or Simon Drew Jazz, you will find some of my jazz music. You may like it, you may hate it. It is completely up to you what your opinion of it is. But for those of you who have mentioned my smooth voice, feel free to check it out and you can hear more of it. So finally into the episode... And one of my all-time favorite quotes and the inspiration behind this podcast episode comes from Seneca when he's talking about the power of words. He says the following, quote, Words need to be sown like seed. No matter how tiny the seed may be, when it lands in the right sort of ground, it unfolds its strength and from being minute, expands and grows to a massive size. Reason does the same. To the outward eye, its dimensions may be insignificant, but with activity it starts developing. Although the words spoken are few, if the mind has taken them in as it should, they gather strength and shoot upwards. Your words have more power than you will ever begin to comprehend. Your words can create light, and they can also create darkness. As Seneca says, your words, if sown in fertile ground, can grow to a massive size. Your words can enable people to dream, or they can tear someone's dreams apart. Your words have the power to give life, and they have the power to take life. Most of us don't realize just how important words actually are, and as a result, we are casual with our words. If we truly knew what effect our words were having, then we would be much more careful and considerate with the way that we use them. Every time you speak, you are sowing a seed, and based on the words you speak, this seed will either grow to bear beautiful fruits, or it will grow to be a weed and a disease in the mind. Let me give you two contrasting examples of how powerful this seed can be. World War II and the Holocaust was not just a war, but rather it was a disease of the mind, spread by the terrible words that were sown by Hitler into the minds of those who he influenced. The most horrifying atrocities were committed in that war, but it all began with words that had the power to hypnotize an entire nation, and that would eventually lead to a mass genocide. On the opposite side of the spectrum, the civil rights movement in the United States would never have started if it had not been for the powerful words sown by all the leaders across the nation, including Martin Luther King Jr. Who could forget those most powerful words that have been burned into history? I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Just reading these words still gives power to the soul. Remember that your words have the power to leave a legacy. Think of the people who have empowered nations and the people who have changed the world. The greatest legacy that they left and the reason that we are able to remember the power that they possessed is through the words that they spoke. Carefully chosen words can transcend generations in the form of books, speeches, conversations, writings, and quotes. Quotes are nothing more than a collection of words, but because they are formed in a way that is intelligent and considered, they have the power to change people's lives. But don't imagine for a second that it is only the most powerful people in the world who can leave a legacy and change people's lives with their words. Your words can change people's lives. Your words can leave a legacy if you will be considered and calculated in the way that you use them. I've recently begun doing seminars at high schools here in Australia, and I've been thinking about the true purpose of school. You know, schooling and education is not just a period of learning, but rather it is a journey from darkness into the light. With every new class, the student is able to see the world in a new way, and to see his or her life through a new lens. This is all made possible through words. Have you ever heard someone say, I couldn't see that before, but now I see? Your words, if sown correctly, can have the power to take people out of the darkness and into the light. When you share your own unique perspective, or a powerful idea, You can completely change the course of somebody's life, and you can help them to see a completely new world. This happened for me on my 20th birthday, when I attended a seminar with my best friend. 
The speaker said three words that stuck with me and completely changed the direction of my life. Those three words were, information changes situations. How can three words change a person's life? Well, before that day, I had read only one book in my entire life. But those words took me out of the darkness and showed me that if I wanted to change my life, then I would need to learn new information. From that day forward, I became obsessed with reading, and over the next year of my life, I read over 80 books. That all began with well-calculated words sewn into fertile ground. I was blind, and those words helped me to see. I can honestly say that if I didn't hear those three words from that person in that time of my life, I wouldn't have had many of the opportunities that I've had in the past few years of my life, and I definitely wouldn't be here recording this podcast. Those simple words set off a chain of events in my life that led me to become the person who I am today, and they really instilled within me a deep desire for learning and for new information that will change my life. Moving on, as you grew up, I'm sure that you were fed all kinds of different information. You listened to your parents, your siblings, your teachers, your friends, your church leaders, and your elders. And all of these people were feeding you words that would become your worldview. Because of this, what we believe is only really being borrowed from those who taught us growing up. And every intelligent person must someday decide that he will no longer borrow his beliefs from other people and that he will now formulate his own beliefs so that his words are a reflection of himself, and not a reflection of other people. So what you must learn to do is to dissect your own beliefs, and to decide what is worth keeping and what is worth throwing away. Some of the things that we were taught growing up are pure and worthy of keeping. Think of the values that were instilled in you that are worthy, like kindness, love, determination, forgiveness, and charity. These are all really positive things that we should keep, but we must also throw away the negative weeds that were planted in our minds by people speaking words that were discriminatory, intolerant, self-hating, unkind, and negative. And on this topic, I want you to think about your own self-talk. You know, every time I go and speak at a school, I actually ask the students this question about their own self-talk. So the question is this, If you talked to your friends in the same way that you talk to yourself, would they still be your friends anymore? Now, I want to ask that question again, and I really want you to think about your life and the way that you speak to yourself every single day. If you talk to your friends in the same way that you talk to yourself, would they still be your friends anymore? The way that you speak to yourself is a major determining factor in the way that your life will turn out. And the negative things that you say to and about yourself all stem from the people who planted negative words in your mind. You're dumb. You can't do that. Why don't you give up on that for now? You don't have the right body for that. These are all examples of words that have the power to completely ruin a person's life. A perfect example of a person who was able to move beyond these negative words of the past is Christy Reeves, a guest who I had on my other podcast, Searching for Good. Christy was told at a young age by her ballet instructor that she didn't have the right body type for professional ballet, and that she should stick to a career of teaching. These words had a powerful effect on her life, and for many years she lived with that story in her mind, and she genuinely believed that she couldn't achieve that lifelong goal of becoming a professional dancer. Then one day she woke up and realized that she was not living her own life, but that she was living the life of her ballet instructor. This was not her truth, but it was her instructor's truth. Once Christy realized this, she immediately began looking for opportunities to live out her dream, and within a short amount of time she was dancing in a major production in New York City, a goal that she had wanted to achieve since she was a child. Imagine how much sooner she could have achieved this goal if her instructor had chosen to use words that would uplift Christy, as opposed to pushing her down. Words are powerful, and you need to be intelligent enough to love yourself and to speak kindly to yourself, because in the end, you are the only one who gets to decide who you will listen to and who you will shut out. 
You don't have to believe the lies that you've been told about yourself. You're a miracle, and the potential that you possess is greater than you can ever comprehend. I'd really like to encourage you to take your words seriously, and to make words an important study in your life. Develop your vocabulary, for each new word brings with it a new way to see the world, and a new opportunity to lift and inspire other people. Be careful with the things that you say to others, for they truly have the power to change the course of history. Be intelligent with the words that you decide to listen to, for each conversation is either a flower or a weed to your mind. Be careful about the way that you speak to yourself, for this internal dialogue determines your direction in life. You have the power to leave a legacy. You have the potential to be a person who lifts other people up. You can inspire others and help other people to leave the darkness and enter the light. You can be the reason why someone is able to live out their dreams and desires, and it all begins with your words. So thank you so much for listening to this episode. I I really appreciate your support. I just want to show some extreme gratitude for everybody who's been listening so far. I've been really surprised by the amount of downloads that I've been getting so far. And I really hope that the messages that I'm sharing have been extremely valuable to you. As usual, I would really like to encourage you to uh, reach out to me. So if you want to get in contact with me just to say hi or to share some experiences from using the principles from the podcast, then I'd love to get in contact with you and you know to talk to you about that. So go to my website. It's rise to the good You can send me an email there. Or you can go to my Facebook page, which is Simon Drew or Daily Stoic Quotes. I can't wait to talk to you next episode, but until then, I hope that this episode